Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.1. In this episode, the first thing we need to do is send a scanner over to the moon to see where the ore and carbonite are, and perhaps some other resources. But first let's take a look at mission control, because while I was taking a look at the tracking station, I noticed an orbit around the moon, and it happened to be a polar orbit, which would be good for scanning. And so, I, I don't think it's exploration. I have to see which category is, uh, well, satellites. Position a satellite in polar orbit of the moon. Okay. Uh, one star, a trivial contract. How dare they. Um, they want it at 237 by 220, which is pretty high. Inclination 90 degrees, which is fine for us. And longitude of ascending node, 148.5. Um, that probably doesn't matter too much, <laughs> either way. And they're going to give it um, 114,000 if you combine these two. So we'll take that, obviously. We've got room for plenty of contracts. Let's see, ScanSat official wants a biome scan of Minmus, a low resolution scan of Minmus, and fuzzy resource scan of Minmus. I don't know what a fuzzy resource is. Well, M700 scanner, I think, is the main, yeah, the normal scanner, right? That's the that's the big dish that always has trouble fitting in places. So, hmm. Well, that at least we should be able to do, and we need to do. Low resolution altimetry scan, radar scan. Hmm. Well, I mean, we have plenty of time. Duration is quite generous. And a multi-spectral scan, a biome scan. Now, these could take a while, though. These sort of have a duration. Low resolution altimetry scan. Okay. Um, let, let's hold off on the other one, because each one, well, I mean, it makes sense to do all of them, huh? Biome scan. All right, well, we'll put all the scanners on the same probe. We'll uh, put the probe into orbit around the moon scan, the moon first, then move it on to Minmus to scan Minmus. I think that should work. So we'll want plenty of fuel on this probe, and we'll take that one as well. Okay, surveys, surface stuff, tourists, don't talk to me about tourists. No rescuing just yet. Okay, so that's our plan. Wait, uh, conduct a survey of the magnetic environment? Um, no, that's a long-term research vessel. Let's not do that one right now. We'll do that eventually, just not this time. Okay, let's go to the VAB and see what I can do. Okay, so here's our glorious conglomeration of science. And in fact, it's very costly bunch of scientific instruments. The probe itself is 26,000. That's a very expensive rocket too, but we'll get to that. Uh, what we have here is of course the M700 that it asked for, and so we'll get our fuzzy resources. I tried to put everything that could be done from a high altitude, so this one is best at 150. We're going to be going around 200-ish, I think it said. So yeah, um, it can actually do all resources. But it does this one with the fuzzy resources, I, I don't know why, but okay, we can do that. And uh, just for the heck of it, we've also got a multi-spectral imaging platform for minerals. So it does that, and that has it best at 200 for minerals, so I thought that was fine. Uh, we've also got a magnetometer boom. This one needs to be lower for ore, uh, but it'll give us a better re resolution, I think, so we'll have to look for that. Uh, we've got a uh, carbonite detection array, and max altitude is 500,000, so that should be fine, and that's surface mode. So yeah, we'll be able to find carbonite best, 150, so that's good. Uh, they want an altimetry sensor, so we've got the radar altimetry sensor for the, that scan, and also the biome scan is with this multispectral sensor, uh, which is not to be confused with the multispectral imaging platform. Right. <laughs> Lots of multi-spectral thingies, but uh, I believe this is the one that we want for biomes. I've also got an antenna here, whoops, a dwarf satellite dish, 
sort of mean. But anyway, um, yeah, tiny satellite dish, uh, direct, and also we've got Commutron 16, uh, just in case. So those are the things, and this probe itself has 1,993, so figure 900 at most to transfer to the moon, uh, 200 to get into uh, orbit, let's say 300, that's 1,200 there, and then we transfer to Midmus and get into orbit around there, it shouldn't be a b big deal, it can definitely handle it. Um, then there's the rest of the rocket. In here, we have uh, this version of the LV-9, now and I picked this version because it it has less ISP by a little bit. It's got 340 instead of 345, uh, but it has 80 kilonewtons of thrust. It's a bit heavier too, 0.9 tons. The normal LV-99 is only 0.5. The reason we needed something that had a lot of thrust is because we're going to try and get this into orbit and then land this. So this is going to toss that up into a high trajectory then this is going to push the payload into orbit. Um, this part is expendable, so it also needs to be cheap. It's actually cheaper than an SRB that could do the same job, though the SRB would do it quicker. And then after that minute and 30 seconds, we have to switch back to this and bring it back down, which means that this has to go up you know, and get a pretty long time to apoapsis, so we'll have to watch for that. There is a locked tank here, so there's actually a lot of Delta V available to boost back and then land and the capacity for this system should be much more than this particular payload uh, we would be expecting maybe a three ton capacity for this I've put parachutes, I've put reaction wheel plenty of juice for power we've got Werner engines, we've got air brakes we are not going to lose this stage and uh, just for so you know down here we've got a LVT-30 and then uh, two thud engines, so plenty of power there. Uh, of course, the LVT-30 is not good for, uh, it doesn't have gimbling, so it's not really a good landing engine, but the thuds should make up for that. Okay, so that just about says it all. All right, here we are, stubby little rocket, as all Gribble rockets tend to be. Okay, throttle up, SAS is on. Everything looks fine. I still haven't configured my mech jet windows. Uh, Okay, so we need to watch the time to apoapsis this year. And launch. Again, it's supposed to be a high toss. Most of the horizontal components will be handled by the LV-909 stage. But that doesn't mean we're going straight up all the way or anything. Okay. That's a good time to have this right there. Okay, set. And ignition. And fairing set. Okay, and we just need to go horizontal now. Uh oh! Uh, come on. Come on, baby. <laughs> go, go this way. Yeah, that's right. Ooh, still a little bit of air there, huh? So the first stage is still coasting up during this bit. I think that's it. Got to restrain that apoapsis. I don't want to coast or anything. Okay, we're in space. I'm going to extend the antennae. Okay, well, looks like we're going to have to do a burn at Apoapsis, but it's nine minutes to Apoapsis, so let's, um, let's just quickly switch to the other vessel before it starts going down, shall we? Yep, switch to. Actually, it's already started going down. And then we got to hop back to that and complete orbit. Okay, unlock this tank. Oh, no, 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 stop that. Okay, um, we're already going down. We should turn this way. Reaction wheel. Make sure surface. And I want landing guidance now. I want to show landing predictions. Um, oh, 
Oh, it uh, was showing me the wrong place. Okay. All right. Well, we're going this way. We probably went too far. But we'll let drag handle some of that. Maybe it's not going to handle enough. Hold on. I'm looking at this target difference here. Hmm. I might be overusing my fuel a bit. Okay, um, air brakes on. That'll give us some extra drag to bring that in. You can see that sort of happening. Well, we're overshooting because I was looking at the wrong target. Of course, with uh, 700 kilometers, I should have figured it was the wrong target, but I think I was sort of thinking about Earth more than Kerbin somehow. Oh, we don't need this anymore. I could use a velocity readout of some kind. Hmm, surface info maybe. All right, landing gear down. I hate that the foot pads are splayed out like that. I could use the parachutes at any time. Not exactly how SpaceX does it, I know. Oh, oh, but can, oh no! Ah, oh, oh, oh. Okay, well, definitely not how SpaceX does it. That was a bit of a mistake. But it survived. Let's recover. The landing struts are uh, tweak scaled up uh, to 150%, so just for you to know, those are not the default size. Okay, well, back to our actual mission. Okay, we can ditch this stage, and this will re-enter, so that's actually good. So, let's do that. There's, there's no reason to keep you, right? Right. Even though it's overpowered for this, I chose the, the Spark engine because it's got gimbling, and the instruments aren't necessarily balanced on on the different sides so better to have something with gimbling and that's a fine orbit let's actually activate the uh, oh that's a little bit too far down isn't it because it expands like that and it clips the mm, yeah it's too far down I don't like it clipping the solar panels, though I'm happy that it doesn't actually destroy them. That's a positive. I guess this detection array is automatic. It doesn't tell me to deploy it or start it. The survey scanner does. Okay. Well, that's what it looks like all on... Oh, wait. The magnetometer. Okay, that's what it looks like all unpacked. Let's go to the moon. Well, it's going to be hard to get the the high approach from here. We'll have to do a, an inclination change and that's not good near Kerbin. I'd rather do it like here and then change inclination. Uh, though it's complicating things there. It's just cheaper, I think. We could do a mid-course adjustment. That might be even cheaper. That costs 173 there. Okay, we'll plan for this sequence of burns. Oh dear, the electric charge really goes away quickly on the dark side. I don't know if the spark engine... Hmm... Yeah, okay, this is... This is... Oh, okay, we need to stop the... Uh-oh, uh, uh, retract scanner. 
Uh, stop all the things that consume electricity, please. Stop radar scan. We probably did not do this quickly enough. There we go. Whew. Wow, they, they do guzzle a lot of electricity, don't they? Now we're just down to 0 0.03 electric charge consumption. Didn't realize they were that hungry. I would have put more solar panels on. Oh, I did put, um, where is it? Ambient light adjustment. I still don't know what's up with planet shine, though. Oh, wait. No! Ambient, adju ambient light adjustment doesn't work? Um, it used to have a scroll bar. Now it doesn't have a scroll bar? Okay, we have to go, though. Planet Shine doesn't work, ambient light adjustment doesn't work. How is one supposed to make decent videos? Planet Shine doesn't even show up in Lizzie's toolbar, and ambient light adjustment doesn't have its little scrolly thing. Okay, we'll probably have to replot the, the maneuver. I don't know what's going on here. What's going on here? Anyway, we're definitely gonna have to replot stuff. What the? Look, this is a, this is a standard transfer to the moon, Kerbal. Uh, it looks like it's having a cow because of what happens after the moon escape. So after the moon escape, it comes back around and encounters the moon again here, and that's why it's all confused like this. And then. Because uh, I've got extra patch conics, it encounters the moon here, and then it gets flung out on Kerbin Escape, or at least it thinks it does, but, well, it's not entirely sure. Let's put it that way, huh? Yeah, it's not, not clear about what happens after that. I swear I haven't seen Kerbal calculate stuff so fast, like, ever. Hmm. Okay, now we're in here, and we're on that trajectory and then it says we'll come back around slam into the moon <laughs> and then if we survive that get flung out on curve and escape on this red trajectory wonders of patch gonics okay so but we're trying to go into this orbit and at least we're approaching uh, we will want to go high because otherwise we'll be going in the wrong direction that looks pretty darn close right there. And then once we make orbit, we should be able to hit that right right there. How much delta V does it say we have left, by the way? 1,109. Still should be enough to do this and then do Minmus. Okay, so our burn for orbit will be like that. There we go, it'll cost 324.4 and we should be in exactly the orbit we want to be in. I hope we don't require relay through that satellite in order to communicate back. I think we should be able to communicate back on our own. Nice to know that the relay system works, of course. And here we go for orbit around the moon. It just occurred to me that I might not have read the contract in sufficient detail. I hope I got everything. Maintain stability for 10 seconds? Yes, I did. Okay, so success. Now let's scan the moon for resources and then later on we can transfer this over to Minmus to scan it for resources. So deploy scanner now. Um, I definitely want to use that. I think it's automatically working anyway. Log magnetometer data. Ooh, we get data. Um, well, okay, we'll transmit data. We should get some science, some solid science out of this anyway. Okay, all the things seem to be operational. Oh, except for this one. Uh, but it's a, just a biome scanner, but I guess biomes are nice. It's good to know about biomes. Analyze data. Okay, that doesn't count. Okay, well, yet. Maybe it'll count later on. Okay, so we're doing science around the moon, as one does. And does ScanSat acknowledge this? Give me a big map, ScanSat. Uh, operates much faster. 
Uh, that's Kerbin. Well, we've got a patch of something over there. Mm. I always have trouble with ScanSat trying to figure out if it's going to do what I want it to do. Like, scan for resources in particular. Resource setting. Instant resource scan requires... Narr no. <laughs> no, I don't want it to require a narrowband scanner. Sorry. There is also, there is the stock scanning, I suppose. Perform an orbital survey first. Okay, well, let's do that. Mm, perform orbital survey. Okay, we have an orbital survey. Not monochrome. Okay, let's take a look on the map. Well, pretty definite splotches, huh? There's a splotch of this stuff. Okay, what is this stuff? I want ore. Ah. Um, well, right there would be good, huh? But that's just for ore. What about carbonite? Carbonite's not so good there. Carbonite's uh, good at the pole. Or is not, oh is that the pole? Yeah, it must be. Or is not so good at the pole. Let's reduce the cutoff a bit. Okay, well I'll have to rely on this because I'm not. In, well, we'll wait a little bit, but we need to do some planning here. Carbonite looks like that, with a fifty percent cutoff. So there, there, and then ore. We could land in this crater or that crater, and then we'd have a, a certain amount of ore. This looks pretty good, but carbonite is completely non-existent there. Here, ore is weak. Ore is good up there. Carbonite's good up there. Water is non-existent, but it's good. I mean, we could put it in the border or here. I guess, I mean, one novel thing would be a polar moon station. I don't think that sort of thing is usually done. Most of the time, we put it on, on the equator. It's just easier. But it would have the benefit of novelty. Minerals? It's good for minerals. Not so good for metal ore, but... Uh, could be there. Metallic ore. I don't know what the difference between metallic ore and metal ore are. Um, carbonite. Hydrates. Good. Gypsum. Not so good. Exotic. Now, exotic minerals sounds important. Dirt. Doesn't. Um, <laughs> alumina. Alumina sounds important. Dirt. I mean, of course dirt is important, I'm obviously joking, but, um, so in theory we could just uh, increase the inclination a little bit more and dump it over there, or we could wait till that comes around under our orbit and put the base over here. Let me take a look at the big map for uh, ScanSat again. Maybe I have to disable stock scanning for it to actually scan? But is that going to be a good idea? I've just done a lot of planning here. And disable stock scanning has not actually changed this sort of situation. I don't understand sometimes. I mean, I probably should read, you know, <laughs> documentation about all this. Uh, or try and remember what the heck I did last time. But this seems so much easier. Just using the stock version of things. Disable stock scanning has not done anything. I'm just going to go back to the stock scanning for now. Until I read the comments on the last time I tried to understand ScanSat, 
Uh, I'm sh I, uh, in the previous series, I'm sure I had the same same problem, and I need to figure it out again. Okay, so let's see. Perform oral survey. Okay, we did that. We have our biomes. Is it all the same? Yeah, I think it's generated on the save. So we still have a choice between these two. And because it will be interesting, though I'll probably pay for it later, we are going to aim for this patch here, which has the benefit of being closer to the pole, which has other resources. And we're probably going to aim for the higher end of it. Uh, because there are some resources that are only... Well, hydrates... Okay, I think it said water. Water is right up there. But we'll try and tilt our orbit so that we hit the higher end of it. So, to this mission. I don't think we have enough left over in this to refuel it. So we might as well use this to do the inclination. We'll just land one module now. And then we're going to have to do some some other refueler. We'll send some other refueler over so that the orange can get back to full so it can handle this module. Okay, we will do this kind of pass. I'm probably going to regret this later, but here we go. Polar... Oh, I, I like how we can see it there. That's good. Uh, Semi-polar sort of base. Okay, well, that should be enough. Let's see. Yeah, that's quite a pass. So, I'm surprised this doesn't have upward facing lights. I should have thought of that. Because it's got a docking port on top. Why didn't I put any lights on top? Well, anyway, we uh, will decouple here and and the orange will take over. And we're going to undock. Decouple node. Okay. It's all up to the orange now. Okay, here we go. Ignition and retro. Uh oh, we've got an orange like spin. Let's stop that. Ooh, let's hope we keep communication, though. That could be important. It's dark. It's dark here. Let us... Deploy. Yes, we need landing abilities. Um, there's another crater here that we don't want to fall into. So we are going to establish our base here between that crater and these craters and I hope that's all right. I need some sort of slope indicator like uh, Kerbal Engineer has. Mm, at this point I'm gonna engage RCS to help us with our balance. Oh boy. Balancing is not so easy right now, actually. Um, I see a spot on the ground, that's good. Oh, many spots on the ground. Okay. Okay, I believe we have, uh, oh boy, oh no, oh no, uh, abort, abort, <laughs> what the, what kind of a slope were we on? Oh fudge, I can't see a thing, I can't see a thing. We, we appear to be on a very serious slope of some kind. Um, 
We have to dump the payload. We can't get the orange back into orbit anyway. Hold on, let me select a docking port. Okay, decouple note. Off we go. Retrograde orbit. Retrograde orbit. Actually, I don't remember if that's the right, but probably for the best anyway. Please let us have left it in a good place. <laughs> I don't know why I went into a retrograde orbit, but... Um... Yeah, okay, well, it's in retrograde orbit now. We were in a prograde orbit before. But we're gonna be out of fuel. We'll still have RCS, though, mod propellant. I wonder if our base has any sort of communication at all. Okay, we have made orbit. I'll just leave it there. Let's take a look at our base. I don't know what its situation is. I didn't really put an antenna on it, did I? Hmm. Bit of a flaw there. Yeah, we don't have communication. We do have lights, apparently. We can't deploy these. We need more machinery here. Not enough crew. Well, we'll have to transfer crew to it. Electric charge isn't replenishing. We have solar panels, but we didn't extend them. We have supplies and some machinery in the body and also in these habitation modules here. So we do have machinery. Okay, well, there's Kerbin. Sun's nowhere in sight. We'll have to work on this. This has not turned out exactly the way I expected. So, um, I'm not going to do the Minmus stuff yet. Transferring the moon sat to Minmus. We'll let it keep scanning the moon. Um, at least we'll get, you know, a nice map out of it. And then we'll turn to Minmus. But for now, maybe I should work on the crew launch vehicle and see how optimized we can make that. You know, with our previous launch vehicle, we were able to recover. Uh, well, I, did, I didn't recover it using stage recovery. I recovered it manually, but we were able to recover it. So let's see what we can do for the crewed vehicle to make sure that we don't lose funds while launching it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have built a crewed vehicle, and this is to deliver two Kerbals to the moon. Uh, just a couple of Kerbals right now. We'll build larger ones later. But this is a very dubious idea that I've come up with, and so we're going to test it without any Kerbals in. We'll have a probe core control it. And, yeah, I mean, besides, our moon base is in darkness right now, so we'll have to wait until... Uh, it gets some daylight in any case. Uh, you can see the first bit of the peculiarity of this. The first stage has floats on this side, parachutes on this side, and we're going to try and have it splash down. Uh, it's got parachutes here, a drogue chutes. I don't know whether it's properly balanced at all, uh, so we're going to have to see about that. Of course, the floats retract, and um, yeah, I I I'll do that in a bit. But we have to talk about other things. So this we're going to try and recover like that. It's got a skipper and four thuds at the bottom. And that's because the thuds will help with control. They've got that good gimbal range. Uh, because we've got this on top. <laughs> this is a poodle stage in between here. And that'll just uh, be disposed of. Um, up here we have a space plane. The moon dart. And we've got silk panels on top. It is supposed to land on the moon, so it's got these downward-facing twitch thrusters. That's an extra fuel pallet to counterbalance the fuel that we have here. Uh, otherwise, it's got a fuel tank here, fuel tank here. This is a service bay containing life support, power, RCS, and a KIS container. So it can do some things. 
Uh, we have RCS stability control modules. I think that's from Mark II expanded or extended or, uh, you know, Mark II expansion, I think it's called. And another RCS stability control unit there. And then on the tail, we have an LV-909 and a two Junos. I could have tried to make this a uh, single stage to orbit, but then we'd have to refuel it in orbit in order to get it to the moon. Uh, this way, it's going to be launched to orbit, and then it can transfer to the moon, make orbit around the moon on its own, and then land. Um, it'll have to be refueled on the moon to be able to take off again, though. So that's something I need to think about. Uh, we should probably put some, like, uh, I don't know if we have pipe endpoints. Do we have pipe endpoints? Uh, pipe yeah, we should have some connector ports. We should do that. Also, I need to have communication in here. I forgot to do that. So why don't we have the pipe endpoints here? The Kerbal should be able to grab that. And uh, oh, uh, I that will leave the antennae outside so that we can extend them. So. Communications, Communitron 64, whoa, these are, lo these are long, and they don't retract. Okay, let's not do that. Um, these 16S's, surface mount version of the Communitron 16, well, uh, that could work. I have no idea whether this is, this is airworthy. I uh, did do center of lift and center of mass on it uh, in the SBH, but we haven't test flown it, so that's another thing. Um, you'll note the center of lift going like this badly, and the center of mass all the way down here, which doesn't suggest that this is going to be easy to control. But anytime I try to put fins down here, well, let's say we put these standard canards. Uh, actually, let me make sure you can see the center of lift up there. You can see there. Okay, I'm going to put uh, four of these on. It hasn't moved. Well, you know, maybe they're too small, and of course it doesn't move like that. Uh, let's put these wings. Hmm. So I have this problem with the center of lift right now. And I'm not too sure what to do about it. The center mass moves. Uh, if you pay attention to center mass, that moves. It's the center of lift that doesn't. So maybe if we turn it off and turn it on. Okay, how about if we uh, turn it off, put them on, and then turn it on? Nope. So, tough to plan based on that. The 68,000 credits, funds, most of that is the, well, I don't know if most of it, uh, a lot of it is the moon dart itself. 26,900 is the moon dart. Okay, well, let me uh, pack in the floats and then we're going to give this a test. Alrighty, well, it would have been better to have rotated this so that we didn't have to do a roll program, but I suppose that'll certainly test the uh, structural integrity of everything. Of course, I've auto strutted a bit, but probably not enough. Well, here we go. Uh, um, yep, ignition and launch. Well, while we're going slow, we should roll. Right. The aerodynamics of this are already peculiar. The gimbling excessive. Okay, well. Yeah, it's just not a good idea, is it? Well, anyway, we'll, we'll try and continue. I'll try and test uh, the lower stage recovery system at least. Uh, yeah. 
It's just too big a... Well, I guess it wasn't fooling about the center of lift. Was it? We really need to go over water, though. Let's try and <laughs> head this way some more. Yeah. Well, when I say something is a horribly bad idea, I mean it. Maybe I should try to fly the plane, I don't know. I can't decide which side to save. Well, that's the end of that. Okay, uh, set. Let me go over it on this side. Floats. Um, I don't know what about that. Uh, well, um, looks balanced. Oh, darn the plane. Oh. No, no plane. Oh, we don't have any control. Okay, we'll just focus on this. Ignore that. That didn't happen. No, no, that didn't happen. This is this is much better. I think this will go well. We could use this booster uh, in the future. We will be good. We'll probably let stage recovery handle it. If it can uh, land safely on land, I think we can trust it on water. But it looks like it could use some more parachutes, huh? Could use uh, maybe an extra set in the back here since it's tail heavy. It looks. Oh! Wait, wait, look at that! Oh my god! Oh my. Ah! <gasps> it's almost intact! That's crazy! Oh! <laughs> this is too good! This is too good! I mean, well, I mean, the whole thing is a completely bad idea. Um, but, wait, look, they would have been fine. How did he, he even got the tank on, you know, from the poodle stage here? I don't think it lost a part. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I, oh no, it did lose parts. It, it lost its vertical stabilizers, but, jeez. But it, it, I don't know if you saw it uh, or caught it. It was it was actually nose into the ground. <laughs> the pointy end. It was standing by the pointy end for a little bit there, and then finally toppled over. And we were in physics range of it the whole time. So that is pretty darn impressive. That is the weirdest. Okay, well let's recover, and then we'll recover the first stage as well. Um, practically no loss on that failure, but I think I probably should quit considering these are the ideas I'm coming up with. Yeah, I think I will save further shenanigans for for next time. Let's go over there, uh, recover that. Uh, I think I need to do some rethinking about the crude capsule. I did already have another idea uh, in my own defense. It wasn't just uh, this or nothing. I had a different idea. And I'll show you the different idea. This is a lackluster labs crew transport, and it's uh, much more substantial than the uh, than the other option with the Mark II parts, because it's got room for eight Kerbals. They're sort of stuffed in there when you think about it, though. Uh, for scale, we need some other part, um, some standard part. Let's go with the Mark I cockpit. I mean, I guess you could see, okay, there's a seat for a single Kerbal there. We, we could imagine one seat here, one seat here, and then this part carries six, so one, two, three, we could assume they go up and down here, four, five, six, and then the door, but still, they're, they're packed in really tight, and then the, these are all fuel modules, and you can see it's got, uh, it's got four of the LV uh, T45s, and that'll give it a 1.16 sea level thrust weight ratio, and it can get get to orbit but then it needs to refuel, hence the docking port. 
So there is this other idea, and we've got landing struts. But the problem with this is, once we get up there, it's not really safe to come back down through the atmosphere, I don't think. We, don't, we also don't have any RCS ports on here right now. So yeah, I'll, I'll ponder this because I basically built this at the same time as I built the other one. And we saw how the other one turned out. So let, let me hold off on this and we'll see what I come up with and what I finally decide to launch in the next episode. Alright, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.